Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, a few teachers uh, uh, of science department, I think, uh, they uh, approach me whether they can be um, uh, released or to attend uh, uh, exhibition. I think some of them came. I told uh, it's not. Uh, even though I named it as uh, uh, mathematics, it's not going to be completely that line. It will be of some use to you all. That's why I thought uh, if you attend, it will be better, I thought. And I think they are there. Sorry for that. <laughs> this is the fourth time uh, I'm taking on uh, DP mathematics and one session with uh, grade 10 I've taken. But every time when I uh, 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 take something on this syllabus, if there is some kind of insights coming more and more. And uh, after attending the uh, uh, AI workshop uh, recently, again the, uh, the requirements or another way, uh, what actually IB is uh, looking for that changes, changes in the sense uh, uh, there are so many things which uh, we need to learn in order to uh, move in that uh, direction of uh, uh, growth. That's what I felt. And some of the thoughts, some of the insights which I gained, I thought uh, I can share so that it will help us to uh, introspect as well as uh, to explore which area will be uh, useful for us in future for that purpose and I'm trying to give some, share some thoughts. The only thing uh, that does not change for IB, if you think, it will be the change itself because they are uh, changing uh, their curriculum once in seven years, not only for mathematics, it is for all the subjects. It's not a, a routine affair or it is not a, a ritual which they are doing, but there is something in which uh, they can continuously research, explore and find out what is uh, suitable or what is relevant for this generation who is going to study. And that is the purpose of change. And when this change happens, especially uh, uh, it will be sometimes uh, connections are there in other subjects. It's not that uh, mathematics changes into something new. But there are changes happening in such a way that it also uh, embraces or it also uh, connects with other subjects so that subjects are not uh, in isolated form. They are all for some purpose. That's a, that's a uh, pedagogical principle of uh, ID itself. Now, before getting into some insights, which I thought uh, uh, the main uh, change this time they felt is uh, uh, they need to uh, increase the number of students who are opting for Max HL. But when they compared <coughs> with other subjects, they were they found that uh, mathematics standard level, if you see their uh, percentage of standard level to HL, mathematical standard level is 85 percent, and uh, Mathematics higher level is 15%. This is for the uh, whole world. But when you see the other subjects, and even similarly for English literature, of course, we can understand there. But in chemistry, biology, and physics, if you see, more or less, they are nearby. But in mathematics alone, uh, they feel that that gap is more. <coughs> and they felt that with this change, uh, that gap will be minimized. But we don't know. We are keeping our uh, thoughts open. And this, I have already spoken a lot, uh, especially this, this diagram will give you the complete picture of the model because uh, it is going to be 60 hours of common curriculum for all the four, but there will be something which is going to be a subset of the other, which is similar to other uh, changes happening in the other subjects also. They are trying to make SL as a subset of the uh, HL, and at the same time, uh, there will be something as called as AHL, which will be there in both the levels. This will give the complete picture, which I will be um, uh, sharing more on that in the department because that will help there. Now, some insights which I felt uh, which I want to share is the first one uh, is going to be, uh, uh, especially, we are in that direction to a certain extent because uh, sometimes the curriculum demands and in some cases uh, because of our uh, 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 self-audit which, which we did recently, we are trying to understand more on that especially concept-based teaching and learning. This concept-based teaching and learning um, is, a, is a new pedagogy, or in other words, uh, 
uh, it is a relevant pedagogy for today's uh, generation. Of course, the IB subjects are such a way that uh, intentionally or unintentionally we move in that direction, but still we may not be clear whether all of us are on the same platform because what is required there, uh, we need to do uh, more uh, work on that. That's why I'm putting this first because concept-based teaching and learning is a, a critical thing which is required in our teaching process. Maybe we have multiple curricula, uh, but uh, after having a lot of conversation with uh, different uh, experts who came to our school, they feel that whatever curricula you offer, this will not have an hindrance in their growth because they're telling that this will help and actually it will be conducive for uh, students' understanding. So once when they understand deeper, definitely it will uh, help them to do well in their uh, uh, curriculum, whichever they have taken. So that means it is not something which we are trying to uh, force, in other words. Whatever may be the uh, curricula we, are, we offer or we are taking, this process is very important. Why this process definitely is because the uh, uh, role of technology has changed. I will be uh, touching that more in my future slides. The role of technology has completely changed for that how we are going to accommodate in our regular teaching and learning it's going to be something like a question mark. Job demands have changed that you know already. Global interdependence of people because if this is the case then how we function inside the classroom also has an impact. Social norms and value structures also, are, these are the things which actually social changes makes this having an impact on this uh, education completely. And apart from that, when you see the worldwide competition in markets, because that is again a huge uh, area, sometimes we survive, sometimes we'll be out of the race. That happens if we are not prepared. Rapid growth of knowledge, that is in exponential form. And we don't know, environmental concerns also playing a major role now. This is for social change. But the world itself is changing. In other words, if you see the conflict, how they are going to handle rapid change, complexity, polarization, cooperation, all these are uh, uh, happening here and there, everywhere, if you see. And how they are going to face this. So that means uh, uh, it's not that when you move in that direction of concept-based teaching and learning, all these students will be uh, able to face, but it is like making them be prepared for what, what actually they will not know. But at least it will help them to be prepared. That's the a, that's a idea behind that. Because the content, the facts, the topics or chapters, whatever we call in different curricula, it's not going to be of any use to them unless uh, they are able to uh, understand uh, why they are studying that. And that is why the first step uh, required in that direction is the understanding concepts, what actually it means. Uh, we have taken a session, I think, a couple of uh, years back, and uh, what is concepts we have uh, seen. But seeing alone what is concepts will not uh, help us in any way because concepts are involving facts and contents again. The only difference you would have noticed is that they, don't tra they, they transfer. They transfer, they are timeless, they are universal, so many features they have. But after identifying concepts, what actually we need to do? Because we can see in our uh, uh, unit plans also here and there, uh, teachers are able to identify concepts that is there. But what we are doing with that? And the whole uh, business management uh, curriculum, I think uh, Raji will be able to help me. The whole syllabus is based on eight concepts, correct? Six concepts, sorry. The whole syllabus is based on six, six concepts. So if they are able to uh, able to link whatever they study with any one of those concepts, they are already mastering business management itself. But they study through, I think, uh, lens, I think, conceptual lens. They use each lens and then they connect. Uh, that I'll ask him more on that when I come to that place. But how it looks like when you, when you, are, when you are having a concept-based uh, thinking classroom, how it looks like? We'll start with Raji itself. So, how it looks like when you when you deal with that one? Typical situation and try to put in the 
concept and see how it works in that con context. Uh, for example, if a uh, company Google is taken, they look at the decisions made by Google, Google or products brought out by Google, and they connect. They try to connect these concepts to this particular scenario. So finally, you're able to link whatever may be the uh, 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 company or a country or whatever it is, you are able to link that. Yes. And finally, it goes throughout the year. It's not that it stops with that uh, and one. And get connected to different chapters in the text. The, the different chapters. And finally, you're finding a relationship between concepts itself. Yes. You're starting with a concept and finally, you're making a, a, a connection between the concepts itself. And then... The, the final one they are trying to reach is the generalization and then that is transferred to the real life situation. So that actually needs to happen, but to make it happen, uh, maybe uh, we need to work on the process, how it happens step by step. I will show you an example, then it will be easier. Conceptual lens are important. Why, why it is important is not only for uh, uh, other uh, 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 disciplines, in mathematics, if a teacher is not able to understand or take forward through the conceptual lens, we'll be at a loss. We, we will not be able to carry forward this new syllabus because we need to choose the lens and then uh, move on with that one. A simple uh, example I can give, uh, which uh, they shared at the same time, uh, just a concept of perpendicular. Uh, perpendicular, initially we teach, I'm just telling mathematics, it is applicable to any concept which is coming there. Initially, we use perpendicular to find angle between two lines to find, and then finally we are finding, proving or uh, checking whether two lines are perpendicular when their angle is uh, between them is 90 degree. The same perpendicularity concept uh, again transfers to a chapter called as vectors, where you are finding angle between two vectors again. Again, it's perpendicularity there, and then slowly uh, you will be able to understand what is meant by a perpendicular bisector, how a matrix transforms 90 degree when you apply the matrix notation, again using the concept of perpendicularity. The same concept we can bring in complex numbers to find uh, the argument if it is pi by 2. And then using the perpendicular bisectors, they are not stopping there. They are trying to take that to a, a new concept which uh, we will be seeing that called as a Voronoi diagrams where uh, the, sh the distance between two places, actually when they expand it, there is a, a bigger uh, idea involved. I'm just focusing on the perpendicularity. Distance between two places, using the perpendicular bisector uh, idea, they can find the shortest distance between them. And that idea they are using in uh, uh, GPS, they are using in, uh, if you see in OLA, when you are going in a car, or whatever the shortest route which is finding all, everything there is a, an algorithm which is built in. But the starting point comes from here. And they are directly bringing in that application because they feel that those applications they are going to deal with when they move out of the school. So they should know how to deal with in this present moment. But it is concept related. It starts from there. Finally, we are going to a, a real life situation. Similarly happens maybe in different subjects. So that means mathematics should be completely taught through a conceptual lens. That means uh, more planning is required, more uh, understanding is required, what is actually it means. And this is just a small uh, uh, place where, as I told you, when you are teaching about matrices or rotation or uh, how to square a matrix or how to cube a matrix, how to multiply a matrix, these are all content and con contents, facts, but that will not help them. But a student should be able to understand matrix can be used to affect rotation. That, that understanding only they are trying to finally make a student to understand. But not only they are stopping here, of course we know the concepts on top, we can see equivalence, generalization, pattern, space, relationship. But finally what is the essential understanding is that after learning all these, students should be able to provide a very simple and elegant way to transform shapes and also to extend to obtain relationship for the double angle comp. So that is the final understanding which they are bringing from that idea which they are going to do. But this idea we cannot tell, we, we need to bring in from the students, it is not possible to just uh, tell the idea without even understanding, they will forget it in another two days. But to bring in that idea, you need to design the lessons in that way. That is why uh, when we see this learning principles especially, in your learning principle one, conceptual understanding to bring in inquiry process is a must. Otherwise it will not happen. The inquiry process not only should start in grade 11 or grade 12, it should start from grade 2 onwards. Because that process should be natural. That process should be embedded in the child 
so that when he moves up class by class, he is able to understand and he learn through that way. But bringing an inquiry process in the classroom, our work will be less in the classroom situation, but before entering the classroom, our work is more, the planning is more. We need to plan to bring in that process, it is not possible. Otherwise, if we don't plan, what actually happens is, we teach. We teach or we just deliver what we know, it becomes uh, just a transmission of knowledge, that's all. It's just an example I'm giving, so to plan, we require a lot. That's the first uh, area, that is concept-based teaching and learning is critical, it is required. Every one of us should be able to move in that direction. We need to have sessions in future, maybe more, so that everyone should know how to bring in that generalization finally, how to design. We have the uh, templates, we have the uh, mapping categories, but uh, my understanding is all of us should come into that same level, because their essential understanding is given, but whether understanding is there or we don't, but essential understanding is there. So when you read it, you'll know. The second area is because communication is important, it, it, since uh, whether you are studying, whether your uh, medium of instruction is English, Spanish or French because in IB they deal with these three and still I think uh, two more will come in another two years. Whichever language we study, communication is important. So in that what they expect is uh, the proficiency they expect. That's why they, this is again a new uh, area which they are trying to make in. Cognitive academic language proficiency. It, terminologies. It means that uh, a student, if he is able to, uh, maybe he will be able to represent, for example, f inverse of x is equal to 5. He may be able to find the inverse of a function and just doing it in terms of max. And he got the answer as 5. But what actually is finding f inverse of x equal to 5, f inverse of 5 is equal to 4, some number I'm giving. What is that 5 and wh what he is getting as 4? What actually it means if he is able to write it, then he understands the use of that notation. That means he is confident in explaining what he is using. Modulus of x or modulus function, if you see, it comes in different places and has different meanings. In uh, complex numbers, we call that as finding the uh, uh, magnitude of a complex number. But uh, in uh, when you write u minus v or uh, z1 minus z2, we change the idea of distance between two complex numbers. And if it is just put for a number, it becomes an absolute value. So the student should know to change the meaning of that depends upon the context in which it's coming and able to explain it clearly. Uh, just an example for a graph. In graph, these are the terms comes x-axis, y-axis, quadrant, variable, constant, intercept, gradient, intersection. And all these we should be able to explain. No matter whether he is a Korean or a Thai student or whoever it is, the questions are going to be in some places where comment, justify, explain. These are comment terms, but when they give something, they want to test whether style is able to understand also. That is the requirement. So that requirement cannot start from grade 11. I'm just telling you it starts from grade 2 itself, because when you are teaching, make them understand that what it means, make them elicit, elicit from them that what is the meaning of that, how they are able to explain in their own language correctly. So that develops their skill of explaining correctly and then it goes. Of course, they, they will be able to do it in, uh, um, uh, in a curriculum like IB because they have an external internal component where they are trying to balance that so that they have to communicate clearly through a excellent essay or a TOK or an internal assessment like exploration task or written assignment. So certain play, different varieties of places where they are uh, trained to communicate properly. But that stage is, uh, uh, what is that, it is like a, a later part of their life, like grade 11. It should start from grade 2 so that it all comes up and then finally they are able to do it. That's the second, uh, that is uh, cognitive ac academic language proficiency. The third one especially is technology. Technology is uh, um, widely used nowadays. And uh, usually when you, uh, when you see, maybe even in uh, uh, mobile phones also, uh, maybe uh, five years back, if a new model comes, the next model may be taking at least a year time. At least a year time. And now you can see every day or every, um, every day itself you can see some updations, some new software, some new apps. So many things are coming up. I, I think if, uh, if you are having uh, mobile last week, whatever is coming this week, something will have more than that what you are having. 
and I've seen now uh, that one in WhatsApp, one video is uh, uh, going around, especially the, the Samsung Galaxy. Uh, they're going to release a new one on April 26th, which is going to be a foldable one, where if you open it, it will be like an iPad, and you close it, it is a mobile. But in iPad, the, the facilities are such a way that you can simultaneously work on four or five apps, and all can be seen there. That much they're bringing in, and at the same time, it becomes a map. So no need of a, a navigation tool in your car, you can use that as your navigation tool. It's because it, it has a support back hanging part, so you can put it there. So like that, it's changing every time. But that also becomes a disruption, a digital disruption. Why, why we are considering it as a, a digital disruption is, uh, it disrupts whatever you are using now, for some. But most of us will try to avoid that. But what will happen is we'll be obsolete, or we won't be in. Uh, what is that? We'll be won't, we won't be participating in that uh, technology itself, or in other words, we'll be out of the race slowly. First, initially, it's like moving in a train. Few get inside, few try to get inside, and finally, what happens is many try to get down when station comes. Finally, few only go like that. The technology also going to happen in that direction. But we are interested more in disruptive classroom technologies. Because there are technologies which are mainly for a classroom pedagogical purpose, for learning purpose, for teaching purpose. But those technologies which are already in existence, that itself is in danger. In other words, uh, we are not using it uh, to the fullest maximum where, which type of technology to choose. For that, many models have come because especially when you want to um, test whether uh, the technology, what we are using it is appropriate to the learning condition, we need to introspect again. So there are some models which will help us to do that. Out of that, uh, um, they felt that uh, for educational purpose, this SAMR model is a, a better, a better suitable one. Here S stands for substitution, A stands for augmentation, I will display in the next slide. M stands for modification and R stands for redefinition. Substitution, when you consider what we are doing currently, like uh, uh, maybe uh, we are using it for uh, reporting, we are using it for storage, we are using it for communication. So certain uh, uh, technological tools we are using for these purposes. It, it, it actually substitutes. Maybe it saves time, it is faster. But uh, when you consider in terms of uh, uh, learning, especially whether we are able to monitor a student continuously with these technologies or whether we are able to give instant feedback to these students or whether it is dynamic in nature, whether it can change. So, so many questions, if you keep on putting on that, then you will understand that maybe we are just substituted. A better example for substitution I can give is we substituted the whiteboard, blackboard as uh, smart boards. We keep writing on that. Uh, we use the marker or sometimes a finger, we write there, we substitute it because we have a board, either you write in a white board or in a black board or in a green board. The same thing you're going to write it here, that's all. So you can write it. So it's an exact substitution. But when you question answers in what way, when, what are the features available there, how we can utilize it for maximum learning, when you introspect, you'll know that that is not the correct way. So similarly for augmentation, slight change, and then you have modification and redefin redefinition. But any technology, if you use for the first two, especially S and A, they considered as is only for enhancement, and it is not for transformation. The transformation word we, we come across many times, and we also went into that way. So for transformation to happen, we need to do use technology in the process of modification as well as for redefinition. Substitution is just for direct tool substitute, no functional change will be there. But augmentation, if you see, it is also a direct tool substitute, but maybe some functional improvement. Slightly here and there. But these two, if you are using a technology, it means that it is just for enhancement. But modification, it allows for significant task redesign. And for redefinition, it is completely creating a new task new uh, new maybe a new app or it can be a new situation or new application itself where you are satisfying for your requirement that's what actually happens 
we can see uh, what is happening in uh, consumer market itself. Uh, because of certain changes, suddenly what happens is, uh, uh, even uh, uh, initially when we had uh, uh, makemytrip.com, where without, having, uh, without even having a single hotel, you become a crowdfunding. Because just by starting a website, he was able to bring in people, give some concessions, and he first started putting money on his own for lesser prices, competitive prices. For him, the competition came, OYO came. He, he has lot more number, that triple the number of hotels where MakeMyTrip.com is having. Fab hotels have started recently. They have again half of what is OYO is having. All these three people, players in this hotel industry, not even a single person is having a hotel on his own. But they command the hotel industry because they know how to bring in hotels inside. So it's a new technology. It's a new way of uh, doing business. It's not necessary you should have something to do with business. So they change the scenario itself. Why about uh, restaurants, you see now? Apps like that. Even when we went yesterday, we saw Swiggy or Somato or Uber Beats or uh, everyone is coming into that business. So the restaurant, whether they are earning or not, they are earning. So it's, it's, it's a change of thinking, change of uh, uh, doing, but there is, the apps have certain uh, uh, provisions, like you can see the menu, you can see the review, you can see the quality, you can see the place, location, you can see the time consumption, how much you'll take to go to get to that one, how you're getting, so so many positive sides are there, so that means uh, with that process, you are able to decide which is correct, otherwise you cannot go to a restaurant, taste and then decide whether it's good or because already people have done that, so that is possible. That's why you can see here, uh, just an example for substitution, augmentation, modification. A cup of coffee, then a latte, and then caramel, because it's a mixture of that, and then pumpkin spice. It's, it's the same uh, ingredients, but it's changed into requirements, which are weight. Uh, just to tell you that how we can change according to the requirements, in using technology itself. If you, if you take an audit, what type of uh, technological tools or digital tools you use for teaching, list it down. There is no time now, you can list it down maybe when you get time. And also find out from students what type of uh, technologies they are using for consumption of uh, knowledge and for learning. Find out. Uh, it may vary from student to student, it may vary from teacher to teacher. And then you inspect or introspect uh, how helpful it is or how useful it is, how, whether it has enhanced your teaching or whether it enhanced the student's uh, learning process. This is again the same, but here an example is related to the technology itself. You can see when it's a substitution, just uh, making the child to use Google Earth instead of Atlas to locate a place. Same thing they're doing, but they're doing with Google Earth. It's a technology, but uh, it's only a substitution. But when you're using Google Earth and measure the distance between two places, a little bit of uh, improvement is there. Better than the Google Earth directly locating a place, this has to locate two and then find an approximate distance. Should know about latitude and longitude and then all those distances. So using Google Earth, layers such as panoramic and the 360 degree view cities to research locations. In that direction, you are using some features there, but you are modifying according to your requirement. Create a narrated Google Earth guided tour and share this online, because uh, it's, that's why uh, the learning, pedagogical principle itself, learning is a social activity now. You are bringing in everyone. It's become, that's why the collaboration concept becomes more important, cooperation concept becomes more important, because it is not possible to do alone. Because you need to convince, you need to bring in everyone on this board. So if for that you require the skill. So you need to do this. Because in your nature of job, when students, or especially when the students go out, they will be in that level playing field. So if they are not able to do that way, then they are lost in that. Just a small video which will help you to understand more on that. Every day, teachers are designing activities to target higher order thinking skills in order to engage students in rich learning experiences. But integrating technology adds a whole new layer to teaching and learning. How can technology transform your learning design? 
Dr. Ruben Puentadura developed the SAMR model as a way for teachers to evaluate how they are incorporating technology into their instructional practice. You can use SAMR to reflect upon how you are integrating technology into your classroom. Is it an act of substitution, augmentation, modification, or redefinition? Dr. Puentadura likens his model to moving up a ladder. The model includes a dotted line that represents the threshold where you shift from using technology to enhance learning to using it to transform learning. Transforming learning promotes higher order thinking skills, such as analyzing, evaluating, and creating, which are essential to Common Core State Standards and 21st century learning. So, how can you teach above the line? Let's take a look at an example of a classroom task and how it evolves through the lens of SAMR. In substitution, technology acts as a direct tool substitute with no real functional change to the task. For example, take creative writing. What if you had students write a story using a word processing program? In this case, students are substituting a handwritten story for a typed story. The task is the same with no real change in student engagement. In augmentation, technology still substitutes, but with some functional improvement. What if you took the same creative writing assignment and had students use a word processing program? They could use features such as spell check and tools for formatting. Again, the story writing task is the same, but the technology augments it with enhanced productivity. In modification, technology should allow for significant task redesign. Take the same creative writing assignment and have students use Google Docs to write their stories. Students can then share these stories with peers and provide real-time feedback. Here, technology has significantly modified the original task by introducing the benefits of student collaboration. At the top stage, redefinition, technology allows for the creation of entirely new tasks that were previously inconceivable. What if students transform their written stories into multimedia productions? After creating storyboards, students film scenes, edit clips, and add music. They can publish the videos and receive feedback from voices across the globe. In this case, technology redefines the story writing task to include media creation, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. So, how can you use SAMR to reflect upon transforming your learning design? Quintadora offers reflection questions to help you move up the SAMR ladder and shift how you are designing learning experiences. For instance, ask yourself, what will I gain by replacing the older technology with the new technology? Have I added an improvement to the task process that could not be accomplished with the older technology at a fundamental level? Does this modification fundamentally depend upon the new technology? How is the new task uniquely made possible by the new technology? These are just a few of the questions you can ask yourself as you evaluate the design of a classroom task and consider that not all technology integration is created equal. Ultimately, SAMR can help you evaluate your use of technology and design tasks that target higher order thinking skills, engage students in rich learning experiences, and impact student achievement. Again, uh, uh, these four uh, models are required in mathematics teaching. You know? that's, that's why it's uh, coming into there. We, especially in the root of AI, that is applications and interpretation, it's more technology-oriented course. So in, that means we need to design certain area of mathematics where uh, students use technology, especially their GDCs, in such a way they are using more in modification and redefinition phase, not in enhancement, and not in the enhancement phase. So if we are using a, a, a TI-inspired calculator for finding a value of a function, it's just a substitution way of finding. But uh, there are different ways in which we can increase the uh, usage in such a way as they, you see in a video, for evaluation purpose, for analysis purpose, for those purposes. And all these two things came from uh, University of Harvard because they were doing research on visible thinking because of that only uh, thinking routines came and visible thinking came and from there only mushroomed the uh, approaches to uh, learning 
And now the second direction happening again, Dr. Rubin is also from Harvard. He is telling the technology usage should be through a model. So that you'll be able to explore, evaluate your models, what type of technology we are using. So is this model, especially SAMR model, SAMR model is mostly used in schools wherever they feel that um, classroom technologies are uh, disruptive in nature now because of that they are trying to find out whether we are using for mainly for a modification purpose or for redefinition purpose. Uh, I don't know how many of you would have used uh, or tried uh, First and Max uh, website. If you have uh, tried it, you will know. Some students are crazy on that, not because that uh, uh, they immediately develop the confidence in uh, fundamentals of mathematics. Maybe in due course, with deep practice, they will do it. But the instant feedback it offers, instant awards it offers, instant uh, the challenge it offers, when the student completes one uh, type of a question, immediately the next level it goes. So it's, it's all instant. So the challenge is offered for a student based on his own uh, uh, strength, feedback instant, and also awards and rewards whenever when you do something correct. So these three, whether we are able to bring in in our regular uh, teaching and learning process that we have to think over. If we are not able to bring in the feedback instantly or when we are not able to bring in feedback, we should think of using technologies which will help us in that direction. So that's a learning for us, so it will help us how to do it. Uh, what we do it. <coughs> Just again a, a small video to share on. I think it's important for teachers to evaluate Dr. Their teaching strategies. From my perspective, speaking now, you know, as somebody who uh, has taught for many years, there's an aspect of saying, well, how can I do this better? <coughs> What led me to develop the SAMR model was some work I did back in the mid-80s. I was a graduate student at Harvard at that point, and working on rethinking aspects of the undergraduate introductory science curriculum. And at that point, I could see that some of the tools we had for digital storytelling and so on could really make a change. But it wasn't clear that this was anything intrinsic to a given tool and rather a question of different types of practice associated with this. So that's what triggered the desire to research the topic and eventually led to the sample model. It's very important for people to feel comfortable with the tools, to evolve their practice. So it's just fine for people to say, look, I'm going to start doing what I already do at the substitution to augmentation levels, incorporate the tools, enhance my current practice, and when I'm comfortable with that, move on to incorporating elements at modification to the definition. That's a perfectly valid approach. In fact, to be honest with you, I think it's the approach that would work for most teachers. There are many things that work just fine at substitution to augmentation levels. For instance, I assume I'm teaching a course in poetry. It's fine if I decide, as an educator, that I'm going to create, say, an e-book that incorporates the poems, some readings of the poem. I'm stopping with that because, again, an example which, which we've seen earlier, uh, it's in a different one, but I will put it in the Google Doc so that everyone can see. I think it's... There is another model also. This SAMR model is mainly uh, used in education, but especially in corporates as well as uh, in uh, business industry, they use another model. And that model also overlaps in uh, IT industry, especially because they need to uh, keep changing as per the needs of the consumers. So this model also has some kind of an interference uh, in uh, education. It's called as T3 framework. So this model, also if you get time, you can do some kind of a study. A lot of videos are available. But it's again three phases, but still you can see the word uh, coming here, transformation. First one is translational, transformational, then transcendent. So when it is automation and consumption, that level is called as translational. And transformational, it should be for production and contribution purpose. But they find that transcendent is better because inquiry design and social entrepreneurship for that purpose, if it is used, then it, that type of technology becomes more viable and uh, more useful to the society. That's what they feel. 
and whenever entrepreneurship, I think, misused that word in, uh, I think, in final uh, compilation of terms. Yeah. The next one, uh, first one I told you, CALP, first concept-based teaching and learning, then CALP, and then the digital disruption. These three are requirements for any subject, any curriculum in our process, because we're thinking of next five years. When you consider next five years, these are some of the things which we should be able to bring in or think of. Starters, especially, again, uh, uh, they, uh, this starters, I don't know whether it's going to come in other subjects, but here afterwards, they're calling the starters as uh, cognitive activators. Because any, activation, any activity which we conduct in a class or in any situation should make them think. That also is an important criteria which they think. Because activity should not be just for fun. Of course, fun is needed here and there, but it should also have a component of thinking. But the thinking uh, uh, activities are required because the assessment are going in that direction. Especially for paper three for uh, uh, the incoming syllabus, it's going to be an unfamiliar situation where they're given a task with the help of uh, all the mathematical uh, concepts and uh, technology, of course, at present, they're going to use uh, TI, whatever they have. They need to crack that. They need to find solution or uh, uh, generalize or uh, uh, find a conjecture or prove it or model it or investigate. It's divided into two parts again. More real-life situations will be in AI route. More abstract situations will be in uh, AI route. But still, it is for as a thinking tool. It's, nobody knows what type of... Uh, question is going to come, but it has some kind of a resemblance from uh, CIM mathematics where for paper 6 at present they are using uh, modeling and investigation task. But there it's scaffolded because they require some scaffold to uh, attempt the questions. Here uh, the scaffolding may not be there so they may, may need to attempt it. But in other words what happens is that will be more like an inquiry for them. If a classroom situation is not inquiry based, there they will struggle. So that's why I am giving uh, some kind of a link here. So cognitive activators are also necessary. And toolkit is provided by them, which will act as a cognitive activator, but they are only samples. We can create based on that how many we want. They have uh, added in the program resource center now. And main thing for that is, again, the three, four, five, six. Apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. Because the student should be able to execute, implement, differentiate, Organize, attribute, check, critic, generate, plan, plan, produce. We should not be focused on mostly recognizing and recalling. Understanding also has so many, but that also that level they feel that it's still lower level. So from three onwards, three, four, five, six, they must be given more opportunities. Connections for TOK is going to be stronger. You cannot neglect TOK in any subject here afterwards because you need to know the ways of knowing. You need to know how it, when, you have to question everything because uh, it's it's that way learning is going to happen. And uh, the difference from old and new, they put added in the guide, you can check it just for understanding that uh, TOK is not TOK teacher's work, it's everyone's work. Similarly, CAS, they feel that uh, it should uh, animate or it should mushroom from the curriculum, like when you are uh, creating an activity or a project or anything, it should come from their uh, passion, from their interest in what they studied and they should be able to do it. They expect at least now uh, one activity or something from a mathematics subject at least. It means all subjects, but mathematics subjects can bring in more they feel because just an example, because the strands are clearly defined and it's useful for mathematics especially when they, in a, outside the classroom environment they can do. Just an example they gave, if you consider no waste day, students measure the weight of waste food in the school canteen for one month, analyze and present the data statistically, initially initiates a campaign to reduce the ratio of waste food by pointing attention to the hunger problem in the world. But when they analyze here statistically, they are using the statistical tools what they learnt in grade 11 and grade 12 in their IB curriculum, so that they can immediately apply to a new situation and they will be able to transfer. But they need to, this is just one example, like that they can find somewhere where they can directly apply, it becomes a activity and becomes useful for them. All these changes, especially when we, we got some kind of a few um, uh, 
what will be the future change, especially 2027, 2034? The first batch of teaching will be 2025. We don't know whether we'll be teaching or we'll be in the world or whatever it is. But the future plans are that much IB things. So they, they are planning in such a way why students should be restricted to one technology. Students should be allowed to use as many technologies as possible. Why should an exam should be a pen and pencil? Why can't it be a blended? Why can't it be only online? Why can't it? So, so many options are thought. And if it is online, how to bring in so many technologies? Uh, how can we give choice? And what will be the uh, nature of uh, questions will be an unfamiliar situation tackling it, that's all. So that level will happen in all subjects, mostly slowly. We'll be moving in that direction. That is what actually wants. Finally, you need to find solutions and you need to know the problem also, how it comes. Problem finder and, and then finding the solution. So for that only they are trying to make the syllabus in this way. And we cannot jump directly to that level. So the intermediate syllabus is this one, to make us do something to that direction. And that is why this is what they feel that it will happen in the assessment form in 2027. Process, the situation will be given, they can decide the process, the phases they can decide, rubric they can decide, and again finally they can justify, conjecture. Sometimes they can attack, or they can leave it also, it's, it depends upon the situation. That, it's just an initial space, but it gives an idea that how it is going to change. So, change is permanent and uh, we need to change. A few references which they gave and some of the uh, author's books, uh, I got it, I'll be sharing it, I'll try to get it for the library also. And I've sent a Google form to all of you just to share your thoughts, whatever you feel. And I have to thank, um, especially Taylor Settlick because he's a uh, head of department in uh, British International School in Istanbul. And uh, he has a lot of, uh, uh, what is that, a lot of resources, knowledge, everything. Because he, this is his, he actually belongs to Australia. He worked in US and then now this is the third destination he's working in Istanbul. But usually category three workshops will be like uh, we sharing with others, mostly uh, here and there. They just do the facilitator work. But uh, this gentleman has a lot of resources he shared with us and uh, made us to think and also introspect whatever we are doing. Thank you very much for your patient listening. That's why I told, it, even though it's mathematics, it will have some kind of bearing with other subjects and other curricula, other grades. And I felt it will be useful for, in some form or the other to everyone. Thank you very much. We have uh, two minutes. Anything? Any questions you have? Or? Any thoughts, comments? Can I make technology and put it into our curriculum curricula? Yeah. Uh, won't it make students passive in a way? Uh, based on the technology which we are thinking and about. Then they stop writing. You know, they'll start. Uh, they'll stop writing. All that finger exercises will stop, will stop eventually. I mean, not. Apart. We don't know. We don't know how it's going to be. Uh, we may. We, we, no, even uh, uh, as uh, uh, as a teacher, I also feel students should be able to write legibly, uh, write in the written form. Everything we are thinking about that, but uh, how far uh, that process will be there. That that's a question mark. We don't know. But. That part we are, I'm not telling we should cut, cut tail. I'm telling the technology which is used should be used not for the first two levels. Of course, we can start with that, but we should move to the level where it is for modification and redefinition. So when you're able to move that level, what actually happens inside is the technology also helps the child to evaluate, analyze, what all those higher order, for higher order thinking skills for that purpose. Especially I can uh, um, uh, tell in terms of uh, maybe uh, any technology at present, uh, especially if you see uh, even health in uh, iPhone, you can use to monitor your blood sugar level continuously. It will record continuously for even years together. And you can take it, you can put it time, date, everything there, and it will show you the graph when it becomes, and even it has a link with the to what you add also. So there are chances that you have linked with two more apps with that. So three apps are combined together, you get a full profile of your uh, sugar itself uh, and you can monitor them perfectly. That is one area. 
The another area is sleep also. Sleep function also. How you are sleeping when you are getting disturbed in the night. That also through that uh, app inside, which analyzes and gives you. This is just I'm telling you how the app functions to make us understand. It's not that you have to wake up in between and check the app what is happening. But I'm just telling you, these are some of the tools which are now going into that mode. It's like an artificial intelligence level. That makes us uh, a little too dependent. Yes, yes, it's, it's true. Yes, Mr. Lex. This disruption, yeah. And the disruptive classroom technologies, yes, yes. Are they digital, uh, digital disruption is it's, it's general. It, it can happen anywhere in the world. Okay. But there are technologies which are already invented for classroom purpose, but they are also in trouble now because they are not used for the purpose it meant for. That's what transformation. transformation. It may be only for substitution. For enhancement. For enhancement alone. At the same time, the, the technology may have features for modification and redefinition, but we are not using that. So that way also it's possible. Both are uh, possible in that sense. Disruptive is a very, very negative, uh, whatever it is, but it's it, it, in it, a positive sense in the classroom, digital disruptive. Because they're telling that it will become obsolete slowly, some of them, and the technology is changing now, that's what they feel. Initially, they never felt that, uh, uh, especially like uh, uh, apps, like, not apps, the social media like uh, Twitter or uh, uh, LinkedIn or uh, Facebook, all these uh, will have an effect on their education. Now they feel that uh, it, it is again embedded in their uh, process. It's like uh, many schools are using Twitter for uh, getting their feedback then and there, like they use it for educational purposes. There are apps like, even uh, uh, when Matthew introduced the Padlet, now some schools use Padlet for only for uh, uh, making their child share their, uh, pour their thoughts inside. Just you know, They're telling that nobody will read, you just put it there, something like that. So when, when, they, when they listed so many uh, uh, technologies which are there, some of them are uh, used for substitution level. Some of them, like that, they are categorized, but there are technologies which can be used only for analysis purpose, creative purpose. It's coming up now, so there are so many like that, they are telling. Especially in, uh, in uh, uh, calculators which IB started initially, uh, it was only TI-83 and 83 plus, then 84. They are telling the features which you use, if you are basically using in substitution and uh, in, uh, in uh, augmentation level, you can use 83 itself literally. But uh, TI Inspire CX has a lot of features, but how we are using it, how, how, how we are bringing in that those two, whether the student is able to, uh, for example, they, uh, when a graph is already created, whether the student is able to tweak it, transform, uh, move it, or uh, uh, make it into piecewise function and compare, or do something which is not, not uh, uh, layman's work, like they, they are able to use with the data, Everything they can do. Designing and all that they are able to use. It. Similarly in Excel also. Excel or uh, Word document already okay. Uh, Excel or what, whatever uh, technology we have, we can utilize it for many purposes. Even still, uh, I see uh, when we, uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, using Excel or whatever it is for your uh, IB marks, especially when you are converting 30 out of 20, 30 for 30, one component is 30 means if you have to convert that, the marks may be under it, but you have to convert it into 30, 30, 30, 20, 20 means whether you're doing it, calculator individually those marks or whether you're using an Excel tool there to do it or you're saving it, I don't know, that you have to think. That's a simple tool, but still I can say that is an augmentation level, but not still there, but not in substitution level because you're able to convert. These are some thoughts actually that link, but it will it will have an impact on our uh, learning process because uh, they feel that uh, the the technology which students are uh, exposed to, they will be able to do well. That's what they feel. They are exposed to so many technologies. They, uh, the, these students, if you ask, I think most of them, they, they will not visit a restaurant unless they read a review. 
They read a review in any of those. Uh, they read a review, they will give exactly what it is. Even the movie also they tell. They tell behind words that one, this one, they compare 3.54, this, this, that's all. Oh. Any, any tourist place. Any tourist place. Even if it is a vehicle, if a vehicle is vehicle is introduced in the market, they have the animation for that um, 360 degree view. They show this is changed, that is changed, this is changed. Everything they check. There is no face to face. Conversation. First they do this one and then that is next step, that is the next step. So the level of, uh, uh, that is, it is available, that's what we say, it is available which we can be used for certain purpose. As Uma told, we are not going to completely rely on that, but at least whatever we use, we are trying to see that whether we can move up the ladder in that uh, four uh, levels. In some places at least we should reach a redefinition or in a modification stage, that's what it means. Any other questions? I think it's 4-5. Thank you very much. We'll break for tea.